Okay, hi everyone. This is our last lecture on um, ancient Egypt and sustainability. And I want to focus now on the new kingdom. And, and just a reminder in terms of the time frame, you've got old kingdom, first intermediate period, middle kingdom, second intermediate period, new kingdom, which we'll talk about. And then you've got the third intermediate period. Um, in terms of what's happening with the environment, we know that around the time of Ramses III, um, we start to see low levels of the Nile flooding. And if you remember, this was the case um, almost certainly during the first intermediate period and it caused the collapse of the Old Kingdom. Um, we have evidence that the Pharaoh is praying for um, water from the Nile. And also we know that there are food so shortages. And I, I put a list here of what was um, coming up short, wheat, barley, and vegetable oils. Um, now, what I really want to focus on for this particular um, short lecture is some social justice issues related to sustainability. And we know that um, there is a village called Der El Medina. And even though I put like Cahoon Lahoon, we didn't talk about that village. Um, Der El Medina was a village built for tomb builders. So what you've got here, let me see if I can get my pen to work here. You've got the very famous Valley of the Kings where there's lots and lots of tombs here. Down here, the text is sort of cut off, but it's the Valley of the Queens. And so people working at Deir el Medina would go out um, and their job was to build these tombs. Now it started under Ramses II, but, or at its height, I'm sorry, it was at Ramses II, but it certainly started earlier. Now, what's really interesting about this is that we know quite a bit about the village, and this is an overview. So if you're looking at it like from a helicopter looking down, where um, these are individual rooms, and I'll show you a better, a better shot here in, in just a second. Um, so what you've got here, this is two views of the same spot. So this view here is like a cross section. So if you took the village and cut it right down in half and then looked in, um, down at the bottom is a helicopter view. So same, uh, same building, but now you're looking down from above. Um, we know quite a bit about the people who lived here, primarily because there are over 10,000 texts that have been discovered here. Um, the village was abandoned and they, they left everything, garbage dumps and so on, and lots of text um, written. Now, as I told you, these are tomb builders. So what happened is the government paid these people to do work and they were paid with food. And we know from the text um, how these people lived um, and the work that they did. So we know that they were organized in groups or gangs of 40 to 70 people that would go out in the day, work on the tombs and then come back. Um, what's really interesting about Deir el Medina is too is that they created their own tombs. So not only do you have the tombs of the extreme wealthy, so the pharaohs, and their queens, we've got their own their own tombs. Okay, so in terms of social justice and the environment and how these all link together in the New Kingdom, um, from these texts, we know that from the time of Ramses III, there were strikes. So you think that striking is a modern thing. Uh, it certainly isn't. This happened in the New Kingdom of ancient Egypt. And I give, <coughs> excuse me, I give you a text here um, and what you might need to do is, you know, pause the video and read through these. But what it's really saying is on this particular day, year 17, month second of winter, day seven, um, there is no gang of workers and it's because it's hungry. Its rations were not there. What that means is the government is not paying the people. Now, what's going on is that uh, the Nile is not flooding like it usually floods. So, Therefore, you're not getting the food grown, the amount of food grown that you normally would. And these people who are being paid to work are no longer being paid. And so this is just a few days later, same thing, absence of a gang, so no work. It was hungry and found itself without allocations, meaning no rations. So this is a, a, a pretty interesting time in terms of looking at how environment will affect um, the people who are working. So again, social justice issues. Um, again, I've given you quite a few texts to read in this um, particular series of slides. So again, what you might need to do is just pause the video. Um, what's interesting about 
some of the text here is that people were desperate enough um, and starving enough that they went wherever they could to get wealth to buy food. And of course, they're working in the Valley of the Kings and Valley of the Queens. So naturally, if you're hungry, you need some type of wealth, you're going to break into one of these tombs. And this is exactly what happened. So what happened after this is a lot of people were put on trial and we have the manuscripts from the trial or the transcripts from the trial. So this person is saying, you know, I went off and committed robberies in the Futurine monuments. And then what you end up hearing is the whole tale. So as you read through this, what you'll find is this, this particular person was caught, um, taken to Thebes. He ended up paying a bribe and then got released and then he rejoined his companions and they started to tomb rob. So what you need to do is just pause the video, read through this really fascinating text. Okay, and also the text tell us what they did with their stolen money. So these people, again, were on trial, they were caught and were um, sort of testifying about what they ended up doing. So we know that some of them bought land, almost certainly to grow their own food. They bought, bought their own servants with the stolen um, money that they took from the tombs. Animals, they bought beer. Now we talked about this before, beer is the beverage that you would normally drink. Not water, but beer because it contains alcohol that kills all the germs. And they're also paid in beer, um, but they ended up buying what they normally would drink. Um, and then some were probably lying when they were under testimony. And then we also find, of course, that they, they were really starving. Now, interestingly enough, during the same time, we know that a group of people called the Libyans were uh, raiding into Egypt. So what you see is a general collapse of um, society, at least from in this little village, is probably uh, talking a little bit more, or we can sort of press out a little bit more to look at further regions in Egypt. Um, we also know from the text, more strikes. So I had mentioned this before, people were paid with money. So I'm sorry, people were paid with food. So in this case, we've got grain. And in a month, people would get eight and a half bushels of wheat, which would make 11 pounds of bread. So um, sometimes they were given their own wheat and then they would make their own bread. Sometimes they were given bread that were already made. Um, and then what they do is they take part of the bread and would make beer. Now. If you've ever made beer, you know it's made out of grain, so it's exactly the same thing. They take some of their bread dough, they put it into water, put it into jars, and then let it ferment. And if you, um, I think I sent this link out. There's a, a new brewery that was discovered from ancient Egypt that showed you know, lots of these jars all lined up um, and they heat them up gently to get the, the beer fermenting. But anyway, they're paid in beer and then You've got them being normally paid with fish, vegetables, oil, clothing, uh, sometimes clean water. And so these are all the things that they, they were getting, but not during this time when they were striking. Um, and then here's another fairly long text. Again, what you're going to have to do is pause it. Um, but what you can see here is some guy um, saying, I'm actively working, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do but we are, we are starving. Um, the, the weight of stone that they're carrying is not light, meaning it takes a lot of energy. Um, and what's happening is that someone's stealing food. So they're taking barley and they're exchanging it with dirt. So what looks like they're being paid in barley, when they open it up, there's actually dirt there. And what this person is saying, they are, they are starving. So go ahead and pause the video. Okay, and then, you know, if you look at the dates of some of these texts, you can figure this out. There's more problems later. The vizier is the governor uh, who tried to help this. And what you've got is a little text here. Um, we need to do something about this. It's essentially saying, gather up your family, your tools, close your doors, meaning don't work. And then we are going to see if we can figure out why you're not being paid and get paid so that you can actually eat. Okay, unfortunately, we also or we know that grain increased and unfortunately, this leads to more issues. So if you don't have a lot of wealth and then the price of grain increases, this is what the government is paying you. So when the government has to pay more for grain, they don't have the money 
they can't buy more grain, and it's just this vicious cycle of more and more starvation, more and more strikes, and then they, they stop building these tombs. Um, we also know during the same time period, there are other civilizations in trouble. So this could be a, a climactic thing that's happening all throughout um, the middle, what we call the Middle and the Near East. So the Hittites, the Mycenaean Greeks are having issues during this time. The Palestinians, which are a civilization just north of Egypt. Um, <laughs> we also have other texts, like there's a, a re, something called the Report of Wenamun. And it's probably dated to the very end of the New Kingdom, um, possibly under Ramses XI. And what's interesting, it, it talks about material stolen from a ship and what they have to do um, to try and find these people. Um, what's also really interesting in this text is that when the person writing it mentions leaders during this period, they mention a high priest and someone else at another town in the north, called, um, a, a town called Tanis. Interesting left, there's no mention at all of the current pharaoh being a leader. So it tells us quite a bit about what's really going on at the ground level, who are the leaders and who really is not the leader. Um, what you see is what we can sort of call as the, the international system was collapsing. So trade starts disappearing. Other um, civilizations like the Hittites start disappearing. Egypt starts pulling back. So we didn't talk about this because we're not in Egyptian history class, but the Egyptians pushed way up into um, uh, where the Palestinians were and took control of that. They, they took control of the Sinai Peninsula, but they lost control of that. And you can also look at the archeological record. Luxury items are not flowing into Egypt. So either they're, they're having issues where they're being built, where the luxury items are being built and they can't ship them, or there's no money in Egypt to buy them. Now in the South, the Egyptians controlled um, Nubian territories, and then they lose control of these. And over time, the Pharaoh gets weaker and weaker. It's sort of the same story repeated from the first intermediate period. Uh, we know that on and off, they continued um, building these tombs, but this ended with the last um, Pharaoh of the New Kingdom, which was Ramses XI. And then once again, towards the end, you get the same stories about Libyans who are um, invading into Egyptian territory. Um, I just mentioned the last, last Pharaoh. Now, what's really interesting is if you read some of the texts that are coming out here, there's more tomb robberies, more famine. Uh, you can see a quote here, the year of the hyenas when one was hungry. Um, and then not so important, you've got the um, Ramses the 11th dying, and then everything else starts um, collapsing. So Egypt really gets, sort of gets divided into two, and this starts the third intermediate period. And then in this last slide about the, uh, this particular time period, what I really wanted to think about, and we've talked about this, how is this affecting the common people, which is the social justice aspect? So we looked at how environmental issues with the, fly, the, with the Nile not flooding, so less food, the workers who are supposed to be paying, being paid can't be paid, therefore they can't eat. Um, you can also look at this from like a, a nation level or a civilization level in terms of um, the economic aspect. So with the Nile not flooding, they're not bringing in enough food, therefore there's not enough wealth and everything else sort of collapses. Um, one thing to really think about, and this is important for uh, the big essay that you'll have to write, uh, do you think anything could have been done to prevent this, to prevent these food shortages and the strikes and the famine and so on? Um, you should also start thinking about how this might be affecting something that might happen in the modern day period where in certain places, um, maybe natural or man-made climate change has affected agriculture and it's causing people to starve.